Good afternoon, everybody. So today we will proceed with our course. And last time I, I, we talked about creation of digital business strategy, where among other things we reviewed a process for creating strategy for a digital business. And we used uh, a generic model which had four steps. And that is strategic analysis, then formulation of objective for your business. And then the third step was creation of the strategy. And finally, that strategy would be implemented. And as I said last time, we will discuss the implementation of strategy for different relevant functional areas of an organization. So today we will start with supply chain uh, management. I know so some of you have had a course in supply chain uh, management, one or two or perhaps more, but some of you may not have that uh, background. And still, the objective of this class is to emphasize on how digital business technologies can enhance supply chain uh, management. So in a way, I will compress the entire subject into one topic to kind of give an overview of supply chain management and in particular emphasize on how digital business technologies can enhance uh, supply chain management. So I will take it completely from the scratch, but in a very uh, speedy way. So in the beginning, it, to some of you, it might sound very uh, obvious because these are things that you already know. And even to those who are, do not have a background in supply chain management, what we are going to discuss is, is quite intuitive because in one way or another, we are all part of uh, supply outcomes of supply chains in our daily uh, lives. So I want you to think of a product uh, like a, a MacBook, iPod, iPhone, iPad, or any other uh, product. This product is designed by Apple in California. In order to create this product, you need to have uh, materials and components. Apple sources these materials and components from different suppliers located in the United States, China, other Asian countries such as Taiwan, Mongolia, Korea, and even in Europe, they have a supplier in Italy. Once these components and materials are collected, larger part of the assembly, that is bringing together these components to get the final products is done in China. And as you might, uh, as you might guess, once the final products are uh, assembled, they would be placed in a warehouse. It could, would be intermediate warehouses where the products will be kept uh, before moving them for distribution. Apple has its own uh, distribution channel through its online uh, stores as well as physical stores, but also it uses other retailers and warehouse um, wholesalers to distribute its products. And it's through these uh, distribution channels that we finally get the products. And this is the story of many companies and many products that usually there will be a number of organizations that are involved before you can get hold of a product that you, you need. Now, let's talk, uh, continue to talk about Apple. In this January, many uh, companies released their financials. And the biggest story in town was the financial performance of Apple in the last quarter. Apple did not just uh, break its own record, but it, it broke the record of any other company on earth in terms of profitability. Now, most people would attribute this uh, exemplary performance to superior design uh, by Apple, great user interface of its products, advanced uh, functionalities, and that is correct. But beside these aspects, the, the great design, great user interface, 
advanced functionalities, Apple has been ranked as the best uh, supply chains for a couple of years. That was true last year and the year previously. So there's another aspect of Apple's competitiveness in the marketplace, and that is the supply chain management. And I use this example to dramatize the importance of uh, supply chain, as we will see uh, in this class. So what is supply chain? Now, to most of you, this is uh, quite obvious. I say that to mo uh, most products would involve uh, a number of organizations before they reach an end customer. And all these organizations that are involved in making it possible for a customer uh, to get hold of a product from what we call a supply chain. Is it, does it have any uh, significant role in a, in a market space? Yes. Today, uh, as I've said it uh, several times, the business environment is characterized by what uh, the late Professor Peter Dracker called three C's. That is accelerated change, overwhelming complexity, and tremendous competition. Things are changing so fast, the competition is so high, and companies need to adjust uh, th themselves. Which means ability to get the right product in the right place at the right time is necessary for survival of most companies. And it, indeed, it's a key source of competitive advantage. If you want to survive in the market, those are some of the aspects that uh, you need to take into account. And there is a lot of empirical uh, evidence that supports the role or the significance of uh, supply chain management in a business. There's a research by from 2008 where they reported that Nike uh, was able to improve uh, that through improvement in its supply chain, it was able to increase operating margins of between 10 to 15 per, per percent in each of the previous four years. And this is just one example. Apple is just another one. But there are also so many other examples that uh, demonstrate the importance of uh, supply, eff efficient and effective supply chain management to uh, organization. So we talked about supply chain management where Different organizations are working together to make sure that a, pro a product is delivered to, uh, to the end customer. And this is a simplified view of what a supply chain uh, looks like. So you have uh, an organization, and that is your company. Your company is supplied with inputs, and that is what we call the buy side of uh, e-commerce. When the final products are made, these products are moved downwards to end customers. And this is what we call the sales side e-commerce. But also, this could be called a downstream supply chain. That is the part that involves your organization and all other organizations that are involved in the uh, distribution of the products. And the buy side is also referred as the upstream uh, supply chain management. Now, the structure of a supply chain uh, for an organization varies from company to company, from industry to industry. This is just a simplified uh, illustration of a supply chain, but it could be, of course, in reality, the supply chain is much more uh, complex th than that, as we will see uh, uh, in this class. Now, there are three uh, aspects that uh, I would like you to, to, to note. In any supply chain, there is interaction between these organizations that work together to get a, a final product to the end customers. The key attributes of a supply chain are the flows that happen along the supply chain. For a supply chain uh, to exist, there must be flow of goods or material flows, and that is the flow from the point of origin where we receive our raw materials, the transformation involved all the way to the 
and customer. But also, for this to happen, there has to be information flow. There has to be communication between different actors that are involved uh, in the movement of these uh, goods. And as you know, there are only two ways you can get people do things in the world, and that is carrots and sticks. That is punishment and reward. In business, we use carrots and not sticks. That is to say, for these actors to get into action, you need to provide them with incentives. And that represent the flow of funds from the price paid by the customer trickles down all the way back to the original uh, raw material supplier. So you have one flow, and that is flow of goods moving downwards, flow of information that moves both uh, directions, and the backward movement of funds. And this is the incentive uh, for these actors to get into uh, action. So what is supply chain uh, management? The management of these uh, actors in, in a supply chain and all the flows that are involved is what we call supply chain uh, management. And if you, you have to put it in very simple terms, a supply chain management is the optimization of the flows that uh, I've just talked about, these three types of uh, flows. So in a supply chain management, we want to ensure efficient and effective uh, uh, flow of the ma materials, the information that is uh, necessary for getting uh, products to the end uh, customers. It is an active management of supply chain activities to maximize customer value and achieve sustainable competitive uh, advantage. Uh, I will discuss a little, more, little bit more in detail about customer value and sustainable competitive advantage derived from effective supply chain management. Related to supply chain management is logistics. The Institute of Logistics and Transportation de defined logistics as the time-related positioning of uh, resources, and that is management of the flow of re resources from the point of uh, origin to the end uh, customer. Now, the definition of logistics and supply chain management sometimes can be confusing. And what real logistics is and how is it different from supply chain management, sometimes it depends on who you're talking to. In North America, when they talk about logistics, they typically refer to transportation and distribution. In Europe, logistics is, is actually a strategic management of the entire supply chain. And I think this perspective is uh, much more uh, acceptab acceptable. And in this school, this is the kind of uh, perspective that we are holding, that logistics is more than transportation. Logistics is more than uh, distribution. It's a, a strategic uh, function within an organization that manages the location of resources uh, uh, across the entire uh, uh, value chain. Logistics can be uh, distinguished into two uh, aspects. Uh, that is inbound logistics and outbound uh, logistics. Inbound logistics is concerned with the management of all the ma material resources that enter your uh, organization. I if we go back to yeah, here. So you have uh, activities uh, going on that lead to uh, acquisition of uh, materials into your organization. And all these uh, logistical activities are what we refer to as uh, inbound uh, logistics. And then outbound lo logistics is the management of the resources supplied from your organization to its customers, intermediaries such as retailers and distributors. So all the uh, logistical activities involved in moving your products from your organization 
to end the customers through the uh, various intermediaries is what we call uh, outbound uh, logistics. So in this uh, diagram, the inbound lo logistics is this part uh, uh, of the supply chain, and outbound logistics is this part of the supply chain. Now, there are a couple of uh, challenges that organizations are facing with respect to supply chain uh, uh, management. So uh, as I said, uh, I know some of you have good background in supply chain management, so I will focus on uh, key issues that are relevant with respect to digital business uh, management. So this is a summary of uh, some of the problems that supply chain managers are concerned with. The first challenge is the pressure to reduce cost of manufacturing and distributing products in order to remain uh, competitive. If you can recall, to this diagram that I showed you during the introductory uh, lecture. That companies have to create value in order to stay uh, competitive in the market. And how do we define this value? Looking at it in financial terms, the value of a, uh, a company is the difference between the cost of good sales and the price that a company charges on its products. That is the profit margin. Now, one of the challenges that supply chain managers that are concerned with is to drive this cost down. And by driving the cost of goods sold uh, down through reduction of manufacturing and uh, uh, manufacturing costs, it helps to maximize this region. But also, in order to get the products, distributors are involved. And it costs uh, money to get these uh, distributors uh, get involved in your products. As I said, you, they require uh, incentives in order to act, which means if distributors are involved anywhere, they will squeeze your profit margin. So supply chain managers are concerned with reducing manufacturing costs through reduction of inputs, uh, cost of inputs that are uh, injected into the organization, but also reduction of uh, distribution of the final products. Another challenge is demand forecasting. That in order to know how much to, to produce, you need to be able to figure out how much will be bought uh, in the marketplace. And this is the question of demand forecasting. It is, might be very difficult to forecast demand when information is not available. And this is uh, one of the challenges that supply chain managers are concerned with. Another challenge is failure to deliver products on time or lack of items on, on shelf in, uh, in case of a retailer. So sometimes you lose sales because the products are not available or because your customers choose to buy from another uh, uh, seller since your de delivery uh, is not, you are not a re uh, reliable uh, service provider or the availability of uh, the products that they want is not uh, reliable uh, from your side. Another challenge that uh, uh, supply chain managers face is failure to deliver or ship uh, correct uh, product. And this is the case of uh, uh, complex uh, or large manufacturing uh, companies with huge uh, production volumes. Sometimes it might be you may uh, ship uh, wrong products to, to customers, and this happens so often. Another challenge is high inventory costs and time for new, pro uh, new product uh, development. We, we, we talked about uh, rapid changes in the marketplace, and sometimes you may fail to keep track of the changes that happen in your, your, your market. And uh, as we know, the market space is also crowded by 
uh, reverse or competitors, which means if you delay in the introduction of new products, your competitors uh, will take advantage uh, of your delay. So these are some of the uh, challenges that uh, supply chain managers are concerned. Now, with respect uh, to, to this class, we want to discuss how digital business uh, technologies can help reduce or solve uh, those uh, uh, problems. Now, as I said uh, earlier, supply chain management is concerned with management of flows. That is, information flows, material flows, and flow funds. Now, with respect to that, digital business technologies provide opportunities for optimizing information uh, flow. In order to coordinate activities in a supply chain, you need communication. And that's where digital business technologies comes into the frame. By enhancing information uh, technology or information uh, sharing within a supply chain, digital business technologies provides uh, opportunity for uh, supply chain managers to, to enhance the other types of uh, flows and all activities that are involved uh, in a supply chain uh, management. Within uh, retail uh, industry, the role of uh, digital uh, business technologies is demonstrated by what we call efficient consumer uh, response. In a traditional supply chain management, the focus was on replacement, uh, replacement of goods. That is, supply chain managers were mostly concerned about availability of goods. But with this uh, uh, approach, it's not only that you are concerned about uh, the availability of goods, but you are mostly concerned about demand uh, management, which is intertwined to uh, uh, availability of goods uh, 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 as well. We will discuss uh, uh, about uh, efficient consumer response uh, in detail uh, in a few seconds. So how does digital business technologies uh, enhance supply chain management? Now, as I say, supply chain manage, uh, digital business te technologies provide potential for uh, improvement, improvement of supply chain management. And this is true both for the downstream or the, the uh, sell side of e-commerce as well as the, the buy side uh, of uh, e-commerce. And this is possible because digital business technologies enable companies to optimize information flows uh, within uh, the supply chain. That is facilitation of coordination between the different actors uh, of a supply uh, chain or the partners that are involved uh, in a supply chain. An efficient uh, management of these uh, flows allow reduction in cost. And this takes us back to this uh, graph. Right? It helps an organization to drive uh, down the costs that are involved uh, in production uh, of the products. So we will look at the different challenges uh, that we saw earlier and how information te technology uh, can uh, help to, to reduce uh, those challenges. So the first challenge we said, the pressure to reduce uh, costs of manufacturing and distribution of products in order to remain uh, competitive. Through digital business technologies, first we can reduce uh, the, the paperwork where the information is shared uh, electronically and we don't have to process this information through uh, 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 ad paper. So documents such as uh, uh, invoices, uh, 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 purchase orders, and other documents that are involved in facilitation of uh, transactions uh, uh, between the actors can now be sent electronically and you don't need to send them uh, in, a, in a hard paper. It also helps to reduce uh, inventory holdings through better understanding of uh, demand. As, as I say, digital business technologies enhance flow information, of information. By being able to coordinate information along the uh, supply chain, 
we are at a position to receive good quality information which can help us predict uh, demand or forecast demand. Ability to predict demand implies that you don't have to necessarily hold extra holding, uh, uh, in inventory that are not needed. So you will only keep inventory uh, that corresponds to the demand uh, available in the market. Another uh, way through which digital business technology uh, help to solve this problem is by reducing the amount of time uh, that information is shared across the supply chain. And also, it helps to, to lower uh, uh, the, the, the cost in uh, purchasing management, for example, through uh, use of online services. So in this case, the internet, as I say last time, provides uh, opportunities uh, for organization to, to select and even make price uh, comparison. It provides a lot of information to organization, and this, in turn, can help to lower uh, purchase uh, and management costs. Another challenge is uh, demand forecasting, and this is uh, straight uh, forward by being able to share information along the supply chain. As I said, companies are able to improve uh, demand uh, for forecasting. Another challenge is failure to deliver products on time uh, consistently or lack of items on shelf in retail, in a retailer uh, case. With digital uh, business technology where all the actors are integrated and there is real time of uh, sharing of information, the task of uh, managing uh, av uh, availability uh, of products is handed over to a supplier through what we call vendor managed inventory uh, uh, system. I, I will discuss uh, a little bit more about this. So by making information available across the entire value chain, your suppliers have access and are informed about the, the needs for a, a particular products where their inputs are uh, relevant. And this uh, ensures availability of these uh, uh, products. So in a way, you are handing over the, the task of uh, managing the, the inventory of your products to your suppliers. And each time the, your, your, supply, your inventory declines to uh, a certain level, your suppliers are informed and they release the relevant materials uh, that are necessary for making those products uh, uh, available. Another challenge is failure to deliver or ship uh, correct products, that is shipping or delivering wrong products to, to customers. Through digital business uh, technologies, you can embed uh, checks and balances, which in, in increases the uh, identif uh, uh, ability to identify uh, products. So in this case, if uh, technology is applied, then human error is re re reduced because operations are automated. And then another challenge was a high inventory uh, cost. And through digital business uh, technology, it is possible to reduce uh, the inventory level throughout the, uh, the supply chain. And this is because usually keeping high inventory level is due to lack of information. We don't know exactly what the demand level will be. And to be on the safe side, we usually companies would opt to keep extra stock so that whenever a need, a need arises, you are able to fulfill the orders. But when you have the accurate uh, information, then you don't need to keep uh, a necessary extra inventory. So in this case, digital business uh, technologies help to reduce high inventory uh, costs. Time for new product uh, development. Again, availability of uh, uh, information enhances uh, the speed of an organization to launch new products. So this is how uh, digital business technology enable organizations to, to enhance their su su supply chain uh, management, and mostly through integrated information system that 
enable, among other things, as I say, to shift uh, technology uh, uh, task of managing uh, inventor of an organization uh, to suppliers. And this is what I refer to as vendor managed uh, inventory. So with this, the supply chain partners uh, become responsible for replacement of parts or items uh, for sale through sharing of information on variations in demand and stocking level for goods used for manufacture or sale. Now, an illustration of uh, a normal uh, replacement system and vendor managed uh, inventory uh, system is as such. In a traditional uh, uh, replacement system, typically an organization would keep information about his uh, stock, uh, about the inventory, and so if it, this is the stock level, an organization would be monitoring the level of his stock, and depending on the policy of an organization, they will set a point where whenever the inventory reaches to that point, and that is reorder point, they would place a purchase order to their suppliers in order to get in uh, the input. But in this uh, system, the, uh, the, the vendor managed uh, inventory system, where a supplier uh, is integrated with an organization in terms of information uh, flow, uh, a company doesn't need to place uh, an order, uh, a purchase order to a supplier because Supply, the supplier is, receives information regarding the status of the inventory of the, uh, of the customer, in this case, the, 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 the organization. So whenever uh, the, the level of your inventory reaches to a certain level, the supplier is notified or becomes aware of it, and they can release uh, the materials that are uh, needed, or they can replace or replenish uh, your Inventory. There are a number of benefits uh, for the man uh, that are derived from vendor managed inventory. So, as I said, first the the organization uh, shares demand information uh, to the suppliers because in order for them to to know uh, when to release uh, the, the the materials or the the, the inputs or particles or whatever that they supply to your organization, they need to be aware uh, of the demand information. And this helps suppliers uh, to, to manage their uh, production schedule and utilize production resources much better because they don't need to keep uh, extra inventories and waiting for an expected purchase uh, order. As long as they are uh, informed of about the status of your inventory, then they can organize their uh, production activities much more efficiently because everything in a way becomes much more predictable. And since the supplier takes care of the uh, replenishment in terms of time and volume that when they should release uh, the, the materials and how much they should release, then it, it can also improve other aspects of uh, its logistics management, uh, such as track utilization and reduction of overall transportation cost. And this is not only uh, giving benefits to the supplier, but also to your organization. Whenever you have uh, such a, a system, then you can deliver better service to your, uh, to your customers by ensuring high product uh, availability because the material flow is, happens uh, automatic and whenever uh, your inventor reaches a certain level, your supplier is informed about it, they replenish your, your, uh, your stock, and this ensures uh, availability of your uh, uh, of products to your customers. And in addition to that, you can eliminate some uh, administrative or clerical tax, such as purchasing or, or uh, purchase order uh, processing uh, preparation. So these uh, activities that, in a traditional approach, would be done by your organization. Uh, with vendor managed inventory, they are no longer uh, necessary because the information now is shared automatically. Now, the use of digital uh, business technologies 
come together with a change in supply chain uh, uh, thinking. And this is also happening in marketing uh, uh, communication. As I said uh, last time, uh, one of the challenges that businesses that today are facing is that customers have so much knowledge. And the internet is giving us a lot of information which empowers us in terms of selection of products as well as price comparison. And this has made it necessary for supply chains to adapt what we call a pool supply chain uh, uh, approach. In a traditional uh, approach, an organization would just be uh, concerned about availability, creating products, making sure that these products are available, and pushing them to customers. And the customers would receive whatever comes from uh, the, 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 the company or the seller. And this was uh, relevant, uh, applicable, and of course, it worked during Henry Ford's time. But this is not the case anymore. T today, customers are well informed. And that's why there is a change in supply chain thinking, where the pool supply chain uh, approach recognizes uh, these uh, knowledgeable cu customers that are actively involved uh, when it comes to product and service uh, specification. And the supply chain is not just uh, pushing products to customers, but also it's about determining what customers want and producing the right product for the customers. So this is an il il illustration uh, of uh, push approach and the characteristics uh, of it. So it's so a one-way direction where you, have, you create a product, get suppliers, and you move the product to customers. And the goal is mostly to optimize the production process and reducing cost. That's it. And the typical characteristics are usually these are manufacturer-centered. That is, the manufacturer that drives uh, the, the, the process. And in those systems, usually there is very poor uh, data integration through limited use of technology, poor response uh, times uh, to, to customers' uh, demands, and usually there is very high inventory levels because of lack of uh, information sharing. The information system is very uh, limited and there is a very limited use of uh, electronic data interchange. Now the opposite of this is the, 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 the the pool approach where the process is, is actually driven by the customer. So organizations or companies are concerned about enhancing product and service quality. And this is how a modern organization has to do that. In order to stay competitive uh, in a market, you need to respond to your customers. And all that you need to do is to enhance products and service quality. You cannot push whatever you are producing to the customers. Instead, you have to produce what the customers are willing or uh, to buy, what they consider as valuable uh, offering. Now, typical characteristics is this is driven by market uh, research. And this it all uh, echoes to the uh, strategic analysis that we discussed uh, the other time, that uh, continuously uh, scanning of business environment to know what your customers uh, want, and that's the beginning of the uh, process. And usually there is high usage of uh, technology in terms of uh, uh, acquiring uh, information uh, relevant for product uh, development, and there is uh, high integration of actors uh, of the supply chain. The, and because the, the integration is uh, of the actors is very high, there is high response uh, times, and the inventory levels are usually low. Typically, these involve uh, integrated uh, use of integrated uh, systems, uh, both uh, inter intranets, but also it involves the use of uh, extranets. There is information sharing between uh, supply chain uh, partners, and there is extensive use of electronic uh, data interchange. Now we. We'll make, uh, have a focus on the uh, value chain as part of this uh, supply chain uh, management. 
So we want to see how supply chain uh, uh, management can enhance value creation uh, to an organization. So value creation, as uh, the late Professor uh, Peter Drucker, man that is regarded as the father of money uh, management, uh, said, the purpose of any uh, business is to create and maintain a satisfied uh, customer. Without a customer, there is no business. And this should be the focus of all uh, organizations. But in order to create and maintain a customer, you need to create value, that you need to provide products that are regarded as valuable to, to customers. Now, value creation, among other things, can be, can be done or can be achieved through efficient and cost-effective operations of uh, supply chains. So we want to see how supply chains can enhance uh, value uh, creation. And this is uh, what I've been referring to in this illustration, that supply chains uh, enable us to drive down uh, uh, the costs that are involved in, uh, uh, in pr production of our, in getting our final products, but also driving the costs that are involved in uh, distribution of the uh, products. And if you manage to drive this uh, down and through efficient delivery of your products, you're also more likely to increase the perceived value of your, your, your uh, products. If you, you can recall, last time I, I presented this equation where I say value is a function of product quality multiplied by service quality divided by price times by fulfillment time. If you manage to lower the price, that is, whenever the price goes down, the difference between perceived value and the product uh, price increases, and this is what we call increase in consumer surplus. That is, whenever the price goes down, other things uh, remain constant, you are likely to attract more uh, uh, customers. And this is a very basic uh, economics uh, uh, theory, uh, demand theory. But also, increasing the product quality or service quality has the potential to increase potential uh, perceived value. And whenever perceived value goes higher, this provides an opportunity for you to charge higher price for the product. Because whenever customers uh, perceive you are offering as valuable compared to the price you're charging, you have the opportunity to raise this uh, price. But also, you have uh, fulfillment time, that whenever you are able to deliver your products uh, at a high speed, this presents a potential for increasing perceived value. There are so many times that an item would be relatively cheaper uh, uh, in an online store, but someone chooses to buy in a physical store because they can't wait, say, for a week or 10 days. They want it immediately, and they are ready to pay higher price rather than waiting for uh, five or so days, which means fulfillment time has the potential to increase uh, perceived value of your organization, uh, of your product, and this in turn provides the opportunity for you to charge a uh, high price. Now, we want to use supply chain management both to speed up the fulfillment time, that is the time uh, taken to deliver a product to the uh, customers, but also to enhance the perceived value of your, uh, of your product by making sure that the product is available to your customers at the right uh, time. Now it's 3 o'clock, so we'll take a break and continue afterwards. 
And also, I, I think we'll, today we'll finish a little bit earlier, but we will, I will use uh, the remaining time to elaborate the, the next and the final assignment uh, for, for this uh, class.